everybody. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be still covering preferences, and today we're going to be getting into the Media tab under Premiere Pro Preferences. So we're going to go up to Premiere Pro, go to Settings, and we're going to go to Media here and show you the Media Settings. Just a quick reminder, on Macs, you go under the Premiere Pro name, go under Settings. On a PC, you go under Edit, and at the very bottom here, you'll find a uh, you'll find the Preference choice, which is the same as the Settings up here, and then it will bring open this menu as well and you can click on media. All right, so let's jump into this. One of the more important things on the pre on the media preference panels is going to be this default media scaling. This deals with when you are working with different resolutions and different video footage that you're going to mix into one timeline. For example, right now I'm gonna import some 2K footage, which is close to 1920 by 1080, but it's 2048 by 1080, so it's a little wider than 1080 footage. For all intents and purposes, we can just call that 2K footage. So I'm going to hit Command-I and import here, or Control-I on a PC. I've got a 2K fo uh, footage folder here that was recorded in 2K on a drone. I'm going to import that, and now I've got that media in my folder here. I'm going to go to my 4K footage and import some 4K footage that was shot on a RED camera. Select this footage and import that. This is RED footage, but it was recorded in ProRes on, on that camera here, but it's in 4K. So if we look at the difference between this footage here, we've got the 2048 by 1080 and then we have the 4K footage, which is 4096 by 2160. So 4K is literally, a lot of people would think it would be double the resolution, is actually four times the resolution. In fact, uh, they will sometimes call 1080 footage full HD, where they call 4K footage quad full HD, which basically means it's four times the amount of pixels. If you want to see that here, let's open up our calculator. This is pretty important when you're using the, the default scale media function here to understand what's going on. So I'm going to go 2048 times 1080 to get a total pixel count of about 2,200,000 pixels. If we go to our 4K footage, which is 4096 by 2160, and we do the math on that as well, 4096 times 2160 to get our total pixel count, which is 8,800,000 uh, pixels, which is literally, literally four times the amount of the pixels uh, with this. So it's four times the amount of information. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab our 2K footage and I'm going to create a timeline out of that. And then I'm going to rename this. We'll call this 2K timeline. So we know this timeline is 2K here, 2048 by 1080. I'm going to delete the clip out of there and we're going to do some editing on my timeline here. So let's edit one of our 2K files here to my timeline. I'm just going to quickly put an endpoint and an out point and period to drop it into my timeline. This is its full resolution inside my timeline. We're looking at the entire frame. Now that we've edited this clip down to the timeline, let's start messing with the 4K footage. Uh, let me point something out really quick. We're going to go under our media tab here. And by default, your, your default media scaling is going to be at none here. So watch what happens when I put a 4K clip into my 2K timeline. I'm going to double click on this. I've already got an endpoint and outpoint point set on this clip here. And I'm going to hit period and drop that into my timeline. And this is in my source monitor right now. It's not looking It's not looking in the timeline. This is reading my source clip right here. If I go to program here, it's going to show the clip. So let's go into my timeline. So if I go to my program timeline, if I go to my program monitor, which is showing what's in my timeline, look at the difference here. This has zoomed up. This is center cropped this image right out of the middle of it. It has cropped a 2K image right out of the middle of this image here. If I go to my effect controls and we hit the scale here and we zoom, what happens is it starts showing the entire image. And there's the entire image right there. You can see the uh, constraints of the entire image right there. But basically, at 50 scale here, that fits it within the window. But when it drops it in the window, it reads 2K of the image. It crops out a 2K, a 2K image out in the middle of that 4K image. And that's what it's doing by default. If you import footage and just start dropping it into the timeline, uh, you're, it's going to be all zoomed up. And this confuses a lot of people. So you got to be very aware of that when you import the footage. Now, if we go up to our preference here, preferences here and we go to settings and we go to media and we change this to set to frame size. This is the first one I'm going to cover. We'll go back to scale to frame size. Set to frame size and let's see what this is doing. This is a live active function now. When I add that attribute, it was going to do this to all the footage that's already imported into your project or footage that you were going to import. So right now that's activating this function for any media that I have imported into my timeline. So if I go to this clip here now, double click on it and hit period to drop it in my timeline here. Let's go to my timeline, go to the beginning of this clip. This is in my program monitor and look what it's doing. It is live scaling this to meet the resolution of the timeline. So if I select this and I go to my effect controls, we'll notice it's brought it down to 50% scale. So now it is no longer zooming up and, and showing that portion of his face. So this is my recommendation is to have it to set the 
set to frame size as a default. I pretty much have that set to default on all my projects when I'm editing. So if I have different resolutions, it's going to scale this footage down to meet the resolution of my timeline. And it will do it vice versa. If we'll show you what, if you have a 4K timeline, it will scale the footage up to and set it at the resolution of your timeline, which is really nice. So now I can go to any one of these clips here. I can double click on this, set an endpoint, set an out point, period to drop that in, into my timeline. And when I go to my timeline here, here I'm in my program view and we're looking at the full frame now. It's, it's zoomed up. Now watch what happens. And to demonstrate this one more time, if I go up to Premiere Pro, go to settings and uncheck that and tell it to do none, when I drop this clip into my timeline again, the exact same clip, period to drop it in my timeline, and I go to the very beginning of this clip here, it has zoomed up and is cropping the 2K image out of the 4K footage. So look at this. This is the beginning frame of the one that is that is no longer set to the frame size. It is zooming up on it. And now watch happens. I'm going to arrow up and jump to my previous clip. This one was imported into my timeline when I had that function going, and it is zoomed all the way out. So this is usually the default way to go, even though the Premiere Pro default in here is set at none when you start just using the software. So I pretty much have this on all the time when I'm importing the when I'm editing with my footage. Now it's a little weird. The scale to frame size is a little bit different, but the weird thing is, is when you have this check mark, it is not live doing it to any footage that you have already imported. It'll only do it from here on out when you start importing footage. It's really kind of confusing. And this will show this, there's a little check mark that it adds to your footage. And right now I've got that set to scale to frame size. But if I click on my footage here, this will show you if it's adding that attribute to these clips. If I go to clip, and go to video options. This is going to be check marked when you import footage. Right now, it is not check marked on this footage. It doesn't it has not add, added that attribute. Let me make a new folder here. I'm going to call this 4K scale to frame size so you see what's happening when I import my footage. I'm going to do Command I and import. Import this footage. Right now, I have the preference set at scale to frame size. So when I import this footage, look at the difference. Now, when I select this, I'm going to go up to clip. I'm going to go to video options, and this has the check mark on it. That attribute has been added to that imported footage. So like I said, scale to frame size is not live and active at all times when you have it set. It only does it to imported footage. And I'll show you why this is happening here. And this footage up here that I imported before I had, had that preference on, go to clip, video options, it is not checkmarked. So these clips have it, these clips do not. So now that that attribute has been added to this footage here, let's watch what happens. I'm going to uh, double click on that. I've got the exact same endpoint now point set as in this footage here. And I hit period and drop that to my timeline here. Uh, so now let's go to the beginning frame of this here in my timeline and it has scaled the footage to meet the frame size here and now that i don't have set the frame size active if i go back to this footage here and i drop it into my timeline let's drop it in after this clip here notice it has zoomed up because i don't have that right now my preference is on scale to frame size not set the frame size and when i imported this footage footage i did not have the scale to frame size set so it does not have that attribute added to this footage where it has it on this footage. A little bit confusing. I'm going to delete that and I'm going to go up to settings and media and we're going to change this to set to frame size. This is live. This is active. This doesn't do it to imported footage when you're importing it. It just does it all the footage in the timeline. And let me show that. So I'm going to double click on this and we're going to hit period and drop this into the timeline. And now when I go back to my timeline and I go to this frame here, it is actively setting this to the, to the resolution of the timeline here. Whereas my scale to frame size did this uh, when I imported the footage and it's a check mark that attribute. The difference is here, this is very important. When you're doing the scale to frame size, the software is basically resampling your image down to the size of 1080. It is treating this footage now like it is the 1080 footage, the 2K footage, rather than 4K footage. And here, this footage right here is a little confusing, but it is actually treating this as its 4K footage that's rescaled down to 1080, which means this. This is basically resampled to treat the footage as if it's 1080 footage. What happened there is it's not processing all the 4K footage and therefore it is actually speeding up your software and your edit. And if you have a slower system, you're able to edit quicker because it is literally reading only a quarter of the resolution rather than the full resolution. This footage is reading the full resolution at all times. I'm going to show you what the, that means. So if it's not reading all those pixels, this is what you get. If you want to scale up and reframe within a 2K environment, this is what's going to happen. I'm going to go to the scale here and I'm going to change this to 200%. It's going to zoom in and then I'm going to double it again and go up to 400% and zoom in. And it looks like we're zooming on, on his little mole there, which is fine. 
But if you go to the scale, if you go to this, the live active clip that I placed into the timeline and we scaled, notice it is already at 50 rather than at 100, which means it has literally scaled this down. It's still reading all 4K worth of footage here. So when I click on this and we, t and we double it to 100, hit return and double it to 200 now, where we've got the exact same framing as we did on our, on our previous clip because we doubled it twice and this one we doubled twice as well. Let me go full frame here and you're going to notice a very subtle thing. I'm going to hit control tilde, which will bring this full frame. This is my 1080 resolution. Sorry, we're concentrating on the mole here. But if you look at this and I feel bad for this actor, if he sees it, he's going to get angry at me. Uh, and we and I'm going to arrow down and jump to my 4K footage. Look what happens. Very subtle, but this is crisper than this here. So that's my 2K footage and watch very closely. And that's my 4K footage. Very subtle, but you can see that changing back and forth. I can see more pixels here than I can here. If you're scaling, you're going to lose the resolution even though this was 4K footage. If you have set to frame size, it will retain the information and you're able to scale and reframe without losing information. That's why a lot of people, they'll shoot at 6K, they'll shoot at 8K on their cameras if the cameras are capable of doing it because then when they put it into a 4K timeline, they can zoom up and reframe things and without losing resolution. I, I want it kind of extreme here, but you're not going to be losing quality because you have 6K, or 8K, you're able to zoom up on it even though you're editing in a 4K timeline. Very important. So the big point that I'm making here is that if you want the speed, if you have 4K footage and you just want to have like a, a 2K timeline that you're exporting out, this is going to speed things up. If you're using 4K footage, it will actually speed up the editing process because it's not reading that 4K footage is resampling it and only reading a quarter of the resolution, which will speed up the editing process. If you have a super fast computer, you probably just want to set the frame size the entire time. That, that's what I do. I, I like to go up to, I will go to my media tab and I will set this at set the frame size. So it's just actively doing it. Won't add any of these attributes uh, to them. In fact, you can clear these attributes as well. You can select this footage here, go up to clip, go to video options and uncheck scale the frame size and when now when you drop those in the, that that attribute is no longer there and it will zoom up on the timeline now let's show you the vice versa version of this i'm going to create a 4k timeline drag it down to this little icon right there drop it, and it creates a new timeline and we'll call this 4k timeline so now i've got my 4k timeline and if i drop an edit into my timeline here i do an in point out point and drop that into my timeline i've got some of my 4k footage in my timeline but now we've got this footage here that is 2048 by 1080 but before I drop some 2K footage into the timeline, let's go to our default, which is none on the default media scaling. Double click on this, hit period to drop it into my timeline. Let's look at the footage now and see what it's doing. There's my 4K footage and look what it's doing here. It's just put it, putting this right in the center and this is 2K footage. So it does not have the pixels to kind of reach the end of this right here. So it has scaled it down to that resolution. It keeps it as its scaled resolution right there. So now rather than that, I'm going to delete this, go to my settings. Go to media and, and turn this on to set to frame size, which is my preference. Hit OK. And now let's edit that onto my timeline. Now when we're looking on the timeline here and I move over, this is scaling that lower resolution. It's upscaling that resolution to fit the constraints of my 4K, of my 4K footage there. And here there is really no difference in doing scale to frame size versus set to frame size. When you're doing lower resolution into a higher timeline, there's really no difference on the when you're up resing it because it's not losing resolution. It's actually just scaling the lower resolution up to meet your uh, your 4K resolution there. So it doesn't make it any higher quality if you're on a if you put 1080 footage into a 4K resolution and watch it on a 4K monitor. Oftentimes you can notice you will notice the the resolution difference between the 4K footage and the and the 2K resolution. So just something to be aware of when you're importing footage. My preference is to have this always set to set to frame size rather than scale to frame size. But like I said, if you're if you're getting handed some higher resolution, especially like 8K footage and you're dropping it into a 1080 and you're dropping it into a 2K timeline, this will resample the footage and will only use one quarter, one eighth, however, whatever the resolution difference is of that footage to bring it down to that size. If you have this chose as set to frame size and you're working in a higher res timeline and you're bringing lower resolution footage, it's going to scale it up to match the frame size of the resolution of the timeline within which you are working. So that's a pretty important preference there and a fairly important thing to understand if you are going to be mixing a whole bunch of different resolutions within your project. Now on a final note, let's say that you've been working on a project and you didn't know anything about the set to frame size or scale to frame size and you've been editing a whole bunch of stuff inside of your timeline and it's either zoomed in or zoomed out. Like here's my 4K timeline 
And as I played through it, uh, here's my footage I've been editing in my timeline. And it's basically window boxed here right in the middle of my uh, 4K image as a 2K image. And you've been editing and you didn't realize, and you're like, what do I do to fix this? Well, any footage that you added to your timeline from then on out, you'll go into your preferences and set your set and, and choose your set to frame size. But with this footage that's already in the timeline, you can highlight it all. And then you can simply right click on it. And then there's these options down here, scale to frame size and set to frame size. I'm gonna set this to frame size and then it will zoom all that footage up and you're set. And then any footage, if you, as long as you go set your preference, any footage that you add from then on will do this automatically. And the same if you're working in something with lower resolution and you're putting higher resolution footage in the timeline. Uh, so right here's my 2K timeline, 2K footage. And then as I play through, this is my 4K footage here. And all this footage is zoomed up. If I grab my scale and drag the sand, you can see that it's like it's zoomed up to meet the 2K resolution here. And then all this footage here is way too zoomed up. So what we can do is once again, highlight all the 4K footage, right click and say set to frame size and it scales it all down. Now everything is zoomed into the proper resolution of this timeline. Well, thanks for watching. In the next episode, we're going to be going over the media cache in the preference panel. If you have any questions or comments, please post them.